Hey, Stan the Annuity Man here. America's annuity agent license in all 50 states. Yes, I am the educator out here, but you can buy annuities from me as well. Your question was about QLAC, which is Qualified Longevity Annuity Contracts. What's the 2020 limits? I'll answer that quickly for you. It's going to be 135,000, but we're going to dive into that a little bit more in depth. I want you to hang around. If you do, I'll send you this book. So music, take me away. All right, so you made it through the music, really good stuff. I did not write that song, but uh, I do write songs. That's a whole nother side note. So let's get to the question again. 2020 QLAC limits, $135,000 is the max, but let's go a little bit backwards on that. So what we're gonna do today is kind of cover QLACs in general, when do they start, the good and the bad of them, what, what have been the limitations from a premium standpoint, what are the rules? And I'll leave a draw numbers on here so it'll make it real easy for you to understand. So. A couple things about QLACs, history of QLACs, they were uh, designed and developed in 2014 by our friends at the IRS and the Treasury Department. They are your friends, if you don't believe it, ask them. And what they wanted to do was create something that you can use in your IRA and your 401k to have future income guarantees. That's in essence what it is. It's a future income guarantee that in your traditional IRA, not a Roth, in your traditional IRA, you can attach a spouse or partner to that lifetime income stream. They can get a guaranteed income, et cetera. But the rules in the past have been, when it first came out, it was 25% of your IRA or 125,000, whichever is less. Then a couple years later, they got generous and said, okay, $130,000 or 25% of your IRA, whichever is less. And then we just heard from the grand poobahs at the IRS and our friends at the treasury that in 2020, it's going to be $135,000 maximum or 25% of your IRA, whichever is left. See a trend? 125, 130, 135. Here's the bottom line. With all of this, I, I really just don't want you to get hung up with the number. You know, talk to Stan the Annuity Man, StanTheAnnuityMan.com to get your QLAC quotes and the book. We'll talk about that later. But things are going to be changing. They're going to continue to raise the limitations. And there's some current legislation that's out there right now that talks about using a little bit more money in your 401k. But I really try not to talk about future legislation because our friends on the Hill in DC tend to put things off. We're only going to talk about law and law is 135,000 for 2020. So hang in there. I'm going to write some numbers down so you can see it visually. Okay. Here's the pen. It's blue. And we're going to talk about QLAC. So here's your QLAC, right? QLAC, Qualified Longevity Annuity Contract. Let's take two examples, okay? You have a $500,000 IRA. So you have all these IRAs and total is 500,000, okay? So what are the rules for 2020? 25% of your IRA total or 135,000, whichever is less. So 25% of that is what? Let's do our math, we all know it. It's 125, right? So whichever's less, you're gonna put in a maximum of 125,000 in your IRA if you have a half million dollar IRA. Get it? Got it? Got it? Okay. Now, you don't have to put all of that in there. You could ladder it, you could buy 50,000 this year and 50,000 next year and then 25,000 the next year, okay? Let's take another example. Let's just say you have a $600,000 IRA. What's the rules again? 25% of your IRA, Total assets, all your IRAs, 401ks, et cetera, total, or 135,000, whichever is less. So what's 25% of that, right? It's 150, if my math is correct, and of course it is, because I am Stan the Annuity Man. So what's the rule? 25% or 135,000, whichever is less. So in this case, it's 135,000. Simple, right? Of course it's simple. Um, Annuities are simple, annuities are math, but that's how it works. Now, a couple things, you don't have to buy them all at once. You know, you don't have to you know, lump sum the whole thing. You, sh you could, and you can defer it as far out as age 85. Don't have to go that far. You can go as short as say 71 in between there. And typically with most contracts, depending on how you structure it, they'll allow you to change that start date one time after the policy is issued. Now there's lots of details. I'm just giving you the 30,000 foot view but that should cover the rules and how it might apply to you. Okay, so I sent this guy my QLAC owner's manual, which you're gonna get as well. 
It's phenomenal. I mean, Pulitzer Prize stuff, really good. No, not that good, but good. It's, it's informational, right? And he said, you know, I got this large IRA. I'm kind of a stock trader. I'm, a, I'm this dude that knows how to do markets. I'm like, fine. I really don't think I need a QLAC. And I went, you probably don't, but I guess you might want to consider this for your spouse because your spouse could give a rip about your stocks and your bonds and your ETF and your option strategies and your butterfly option strategy. Could give a crap about any of that, right? Nod your head, okay? So. A lot of the people that buy Culex from me is like this guy. Let's call him Fred. Fred didn't like Culex because, hey, I'm losing opportunity. I'm putting it into this annuity. It's a pension. It's boring. Stand it. I'm, I'm bored. I buy stock. I make money in my IRA. Get it. But what happens when your Learjet hits the mountain, Fred? When your Learjet hits the mountain, that means you're dead. Your spouse could care less about your stocks. You need to set these Culex up for your spouse for a lifetime income stream for them. So. He did it. He put, he put the maximum in. I think he had a million dollars in his IRA under the rules, $135,000. He, he deferred it out as far as he could. And when his Learjet hits the mountain or his Bentley hits the tree or his Ferrari runs off the road, whatever it is, then his wife is going to get that lifetime income stream. That's kind of where you need to put that QLAC in the back of your head if you're looking at it and trying to compare apples to apples, investments to investments. Stands, it's not as good as my mutual fund or my stocks or my ETFs. It's not, it's a contract, it's a transfer of risk. There's no ROI until you die because the annuity company's on the hook to pay you for the rest of your life. All right, the good, the bad, the ugly, it was a, what was that, Clint Eastwood? It's a good movie. It also describes annuities and in QLAX, qualified longevity annuity contracts, there's good and there's bad. So let's talk about the bad first. It's an irrevocable contract, meaning that once you buy a QLAC, you can't call Stan the annuity man up on my bat phone and say, hey, I don't want to do that anymore. Send me my money, Stan. No, you're going to get your money back from the company in payment form. And by the way, that payment is primarily based on your life expectancy or joint life expectancies at the time you take the payment. So that's the bad. The other bad is loss of opportunity. We just kind of talked about that. Hey, I'm this stock trader. I'm this guy. I know how to buy and sell, blah, blah, blah. You're not going to do that with QLAX. There's no moving parts. It's all based on life expectancy. It's not an opportunity type investment. It's a contract. So that's a limitation as well. And then I think the third limitation that people always go, I don't get that. Uh, when you put money into a QLAC and you defer it during that deferral time period, there's no trackable interest rate. It's good and bad. It is what it is. The, the longer you allow the annuity company to hold on to the money, the higher the payment. So in the South, we call it cooking. The longer you allow it to cook, the more the payment. But that's kind of the limitations benefits are pretty obvious. Number one, lifetime income stream. Number two, you can attach your spouse for joint lifetime income stream. Number three, that amount inside of a QLAC is not used to calculate your required minimum distribution. So there is a potential for you to pay less in taxes. I think you're probably nodding your head that that's good. It's not gonna be some pound the table, huge taxation savings number, but it is what it is. So, you know, play by the rules. So those kind of the, the benefits and the limitations of a QLAC. And again, remember 2020 rules, $135,000 max. So, okay, I'm going to get you those books. But before I do, magically over this shoulder is a video called, Are QLACs a Good Idea? Qualified Longevity Annuity Contract. Go there, click that after you get the books and watch that one. You'll like it. Okay, so let's close this thing up, wrap this thing up in a bow. And then I'm going to tell you how to get my book, the QLAC Owner's Manual. Um, and I'll send it to you for free, no obligation. And you need to get that. But since I'm America's annuity agent, you can always get QLAC quotes at my site, StanTheAnnuityMan.com. Uh, so be, feel free to go there and I do all kinds of these great YouTube videos and podcasts on the subject. I write a lot about it as well. Get educated on the product before you make any decisions. To get the book, by the way, before you do that, hit the subscribe button. Do that because I release videos on a daily basis. No, seriously, YouTube videos on a daily basis. Why? I'm the educator. I'm America's annuity agent. That's what I do, even though I do sell them and would love to have you as a client, but I want you to understand the product first. Hit the subscribe button. Underneath that, you'll see the word show more. I think it said, I think in past videos, I said more info, the keyword more, show more. Click that, underneath that, you'll see a, a link that says to get the books. Fill in your shipping information and seven days later, magically, it's going to show up in this shiny gold package and you will be able to understand QLAX. You can go to Stan the Annuity Man to get a quote, StanTheAnnuityMan.com, and then you can make a decision if a QLAC is right for you. See you next time. <music>